Hello, and welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and this is our Library Bear Bear. We're here to bring you a couple of stories of animal mix-ups today. Let's see if you can guess what the mix-up is in each case. Our first story is called Gaston, and this is by Kelly DiPuccio, and the pictures are by Christian Robinson. Gaston by Kelly DiPuccio, pictures by Christian Robinson. Mrs. Poodle admired her new puppies. Fifi, Fufu, Oulala, and Gaston. Would you like to see them again? Fifi, Fufu, Oulala, and Gaston. Perfectly precious, aren't they? Mrs. Poodle thought so too. The puppies grew, as puppies do. Three were no bigger than teacups. The fourth, however, continued to grow and grow until he was the size of a teapot. Mrs. Poodle took pride in teaching her puppies how to be proper pooches they were taught to sip, never slobber. Good, well done. Very nice, nice try. They were taught to yip, never yap. Yip, yip, yip. Ruff. Ooh. <laughs> and they were taught to walk with grace, never race. Tip toe, tippy toe. Whoa! The puppies were also taught how to look pretty in pink, nibble their kibble, and ride in style. Whatever the lesson, Gaston always worked the hardest, practiced the longest, and smiled the biggest. Mrs. Poodle was very pleased with all her puppies, Fifi, Fufu, Oulala, and Gaston. Spring arrived, and the proud mother was eager to show off her darlings. She took them to the park for their very first stroll in public. There was much to see. Daffodils, ducklings, dogs. Oh dear, what do we have here? Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. Would you like to see them again? Rocky, Ricky, Bruno, and Antoinette. This was more than a little awkward. The mothers sized up the pups. The pups sized up one another. It seems there's been a terrible mistake, Mrs. Bulldog said, breaking the silence. Oui, oui, Mrs. Poodle agreed sadly. Whatever shall we do? Mrs. Bulldog could not come up with an answer. I guess we'll let them decide, she replied at last. Gaston and Antoinette were young, but even they could see there had been a mix-up. The two puppies began to circle around and around the group. Gaston walked with grace. Antoinette raced. Gaston yipped. Antoinette yapped. And when they finally came to a stop, the puppies had traded places. There, that looked right. It just didn't feel right. That evening, Antoinette tried to fit in with her new sisters, but she did not like anything proper or precious or pink. Phooey! On the other side of town, Gaston tried to fit in with his new brothers, 
but he did not like anything brutish or brawny or brown. Ick! Antoinette and Gaston weren't the only ones who were having a hard time adjusting. The next morning, Mrs. Poodle forgot all about being proper and raced back to the park. Mrs. Bulldog was already there, waiting with her burly brood. It seems we've made a terrible mistake, she nearly shouted. Wee oui, wee! Oui. Mrs. Poodle agreed happily. This time, Antoinette and Gaston wasted no time trading places. There, that looked right, and it felt right, too. From that day forward, the families met in the park every afternoon to play. Ricky, Rocky, Bruno, and Antoinette taught the poodle puppies a thing or two about being tough. Likewise, Fifi, Fufu, Ulala, and Gaston taught the bulldog puppies a thing or two about being tender. And many years later, when Gaston and Antoinette fell in love and had puppies of their own, they taught them to be whatever they wanted to be. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed Gaston with the words by Kelly DiPuccio and pictures by Christian Robinson. That was quite a mix-up, but it turned out not to be so much of a mix-up. Isn't that interesting? Wow, we have another story for you about a mixed up animal, and this one is called the Useful Moose. This is by Fiona Robinson, and it is a truthful, mooseful tale. I'm suspecting this one might be a bit of a tongue twister. You have to see the whole cover, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> The Useful Moose, A Truthful Mooseful Tale by Fiona Robinson. This is for Josh. Some children like cats. Some children like dogs. I like moose. Molly's room, do not disturb unless you are a moose. For my vacation, my mom and dad took me to Alaska to see some. I looked on mountains, I looked by glaciers, I looked in forests and fields, but there were no moose. So I climbed a tree to get a better view. All I could see was a goose. Perhaps he knew something. Hey, Mr. Goose, I called. Where are all the moose? You won't find any here, he said. The moose have gone on vacation. Usually they go to the beach, but this year they wanted to try something new. So they went off to the city. Well... We didn't wait around. We went home right away. And Mr. Goose was right. The moose were in the city. Our city. Hundreds and thousands of moose. <laughs> we had some trouble getting them through the door. It was like moving a piano, except a piano wouldn't complain so much. Then they were so tired they fell asleep at once. That night I went into the room to read them a book. I whispered their names. Monty, Monroe, Milligan. But all they did was snore. You know what I'm thinking? I skipped a page here. I did skip a page. We'll read that part again. They were having a great time. That is, except for three young moose. I introduced myself. Hi, I'm Molly, I said. Is something wrong? They answered, our hooves are aching, they really hurt, and we're so tired, we need a place to rest. How could we refuse such nice young moose? We took them home right away. Now here's the page, there we go. We had some trouble getting them through the door. 
It was just like moving a piano, except the piano wouldn't complain so much. Then they were so tired they fell asleep at once. That night I went into the room to read them a book. I whispered their names. Monty Monroe. Milligan. But all they did was snore. They slept and slept. After eight days, they leaped out of bed and stretched their long legs. Thank you, kind people, for helping us, they said. Now we want to help you. Please pass us those brushes and broom. They swept the floor, looking like skaters with the brooms as their partners. It was a superb performance. You could eat dinner off that floor, said my dad. The moose looked shocked. It's just a saying, said Mom. Get you next, they shouted as they dashed off. By the time we got there, they had already finished cleaning. Mom and Dad were so impressed. If you help out around the house, said my mom, you can stay as long as you want for free. The moose liked this idea. They had always wanted to see humans in their natural habitat. And it wasn't long before they showed us more of their amazing skills. Monty was a great cook. Monroe was a fantastic washer upper. Milligan and Monty were terrific at drying laundry. And Monroe was wonderful at winding wool. They were three exceptional moose, but it wasn't all work for our guests. We took them out for special treats. They liked movies most. We were all very happy until one day, we were watching a TV show about Alaska when suddenly our moose leaped up. There's mom and dad, they shouted, and you could see the family resemblance. Then they started to cry. I tried my best to cheer them up, but I knew how they felt. I was homesick once on a sleepover. They bent their heads together and had a quick discussion. It's the call of the wild, Molly, they cried. We really must return. We're going to go now before we're cut off by snow. We think a plane takes off at three. And then they were gone. I missed them so much. It was useless being mooseless. Then one day, a postcard arrived. Molly, nice to be home, but we miss you. We'll try to write often, but snow mail soon mailbox will be covered in snow. Lots of love, Monty Monroe Milligan. Months went by. They called. Just as they were telling my dad how to remove a stubborn coffee stain, the line went quiet. They're probably caught in a blizzard, said my mom. Nearly a whole year had passed when I sent them an invitation to my birthday party, but they didn't reply. Had they forgotten me? It was the day of my party and my friends and I were sitting in the yard. Just as everyone started to sing, happy birthday, I heard buzzing like the sound of a great big bumblebee. I looked up, blinked, and looked again. Mom, Dad, I yelled, the moose are coming. They just jumped out of a plane. Before we could clear the yard of sharp objects, they had arrived. Monty landed in the rose bushes. Ouch, he said. Monroe landed in the sandbox. Perfect, he said. Milligan landed in the ice cream. Mmm, strawberry, he said. They picked themselves up and dusted themselves off. Surprise, they cried, grinning from antler to antler. They hadn't forgotten me at all. And now that we know how to parachute, they said excitedly, we can drop in any time. Well, some children may like cats. Some children may like dogs. But me, I love moose. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the useful moose, a truthful mooseful tale by Fiona Robinson. Those are our two stories of mixed up animals. There was quite a mix up with both of them, weren't there, Library Bear? Well, 
We hope you can join us for another story time. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. And here's our library bear bear. We'll see you next time.